So good morning, everybody. Uh, lovely to see all of you. It's quite a bright, sunny morning here, which is nice. A bit of spring feels like it's sprung, um, which is quite apposite in terms of the subject that we're going to talk about this morning, which is about flawlessness in makeup, the sort of holy grail, really, uh, for me anyway. Uh, certainly one of the reasons I wanted to start Look Fabulous Forever was because of my dissatisfaction with what I was buying, uh, which I didn't ever feel made my face look particularly flawless. Um, in some cases, it drew attention to the problems that I had rather than helping me to look better. Um, I've been working an, an, an analogy up in my brain this morning while I've been getting ready and um, bear with me. Honestly, it will make sense. But I was thinking about um, making a bed. <laughs> like I said, bear with me. Um, so making a bed, you know, when you've um, when you put fresh bed linen on your bed um, and it's beautifully well I don't know about you but I do quite like ironing my duvet and my pillowcases it's you know it, it, you're making the bed up for, for, for new so you put the bottom sheet on perhaps a fitted sheet you might plump up your if you've got one of these toppers on your mattress which I have you know I plump it up then I put my fitted sheet on then I put my lovely clean duvet cover on it's all ironed and, and gorgeous and crisp and fresh and then I put my pillowcases on and the same thing plump up my pillows and they all look lovely and fresh and um gorgeous and I love getting getting into bed the night after I've uh, I've changed all my bedding and um I I want to use the analogy of that for um basically what what your face looks like when you're younger it's smooth it doesn't have many much in the way of creases and wrinkles in it it's sort of fresh looking it's plumped up it's got lots of lots of bounce and uh, give in terms of its texture and uh, and obviously it looks great I mean I love the look of my bed when I've just changed it because it just look a, it looks very very uh, attractive and inviting but also it, it looks lovely and smooth and and so on and I think an old <laughs> sorry about this everybody but I think an older face before you start some work on it to help it to look better, looks a bit like an unmade bed. <laughs> so you get up in the morning and you know you've slept in the bed overnight. There's a few creases and wrinkles in the in the bedding that you've got. Your pillows aren't all plumped up, and uh, neither is your duvet cover, and it looks a bit of a mess really. But the great thing about it is that as soon as you've made your bed, so I don't know about you, but I do make my bed every morning it looks so much better. It might not go back to that freshly, you know, washed and ironed and, and bed linen change that you do. Uh, it doesn't look quite like that, but it does look a heck of a lot better. It looks smoother. Your skin looks, uh, looks, looks more um, plumped up and so on and so forth. And it just looks better. So I think that the process that we're going to talk through with you this morning, Sally and I, is the process of taking an older face, which inevitably has lost quite a lot of that, um, that lovely plumpness and smoothness of a younger skin. And you can enormously uh, affect how it looks so that it does look loads, loads better. And everything that we're going to suggest to you this morning is designed to do exactly that. You know, you take the, the I don't know about you, but I do look in the mirror first thing in the morning after I've um, I've done the, the effect of making my bed in terms of putting on the, uh, the products that will help my face. And I despair, you know, um, some mornings more than others. And I think, oh my goodness me, you know, what a state. But by the time I've cleansed my face, put on various um, creams and, uh, and so on to, to help the skin and then applied my um, face makeup, my goodness me, the difference. And it is the difference, I think, between that unmade bed and that uh, newly made bed. And uh, it, you, can, you can affect a big change. So I hope you like, you like that analogy. I couldn't think of another one um, that, that it works for you in terms of getting across what we're trying to do today. So I'm going to hand over to Sally now, who's going to go through the first process of what we want to discuss with you, which is uh, where you start, really. So Sally, over to you. Thank you, Tricia. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I love that analogy. And I totally agree when I've made my bed and washed it and it's lovely and clean. It just feel, feels really good. And I, yeah, really good analogy for the skin. Um, so today I have um, all I got on today is my eye makeup. I didn't want to scare you with absolutely nothing. So I've done my eye makeup. Um, but I think it's a really good time. Spring is a really good time um, to really think about 
your skin after the winter as well. Um, we've had central heating, you, your skin might be more dehydrated, you might have just maybe had a nasty winter cold or the flu, and you might not have eaten so well. And um, there's all sorts of reasons why skin at this time of year needs that, I think needs that little bit of extra help as well um, to make it look flawless when you put your, your makeup on. And so to that end, last night, um, this is something I probably do once a week, um, is I, last night I prepared my skin, which makes such a difference. So if you have got a special event, um, like a wedding or a party or something, I would really, really recommend the night before you do what, what I did because it does make a difference. So the first thing I did is I cleansed my face um, using our perfectly clean cleanser, which is beautiful, um, got all sorts of goodies in it. Um, grape leaf, lemon, fennel, thyme. Sounds like a recipe actually, and it's got vitamin E. So it's nice creamy cleanser. Then one of my one of my favorite products um, in the skincare range is a gentle face exfoliator. Um, and I used this after cleansing. Um, it's got very if you haven't tried it, it's got really, really fine grains um, in it from naturally derived silica. But it's also got papaya fruit enzymes in it um, and it's got um, glycerin shea butter. So it, it's not really, really gritty and nasty. It's very fine. So I find that particularly around my nose area and sometimes in this area, I get a little bit of buildup of dead skin cells. As we get older, our skin turns over slower than when we were younger. So you, you might find you get more sort of just yeah, generally dead skin cells blocking everything. So if you use the exfoliant, and I did it yesterday, I just did it in a circular motion, particularly around my nose, my cheek area, around the jaw um, area, obviously not on my eyes. Um, and then I, I used a warm flannel and actually rinsed that off. And then once I'd rinsed it off, Normally I do this in conjunction with having a nice bath. I didn't have time yesterday. I was pottering around last night preparing for today. So after I use my exfoliant, I then use the hydrating clay mask. And this has got kaolin, but a lot of masks I've used in the past are very drying. Uh, and this one isn't. It's really, really hydrating. It, com it comes out sort of slightly pinky color. Um, it's got kaolin, which detoxes, but it's also got sweet almond oil in it, um, olive oil, aloe vera. So I put a thin layer of that on, potted around with it on, looking a bit weird to be honest, but um, when I then rinsed that off with warm water again and um, a flannel, my skin did feel really, really smooth. Um, and I knew then that having done both of those things would make a difference to my foundation today. So after that, I used my hydration hold face serum, which I'm going to use again today, but I love using it at night. Um, a couple of drops of that, which has got hyaluronic acid, which I'm going to talk to you about later, but that is fantastic for older skin. Um, and it's like a moisture magnet. And then I put my deeply dreamy night cream on, um, which I absolutely love as well. And I used a bit of eye cream. That's another thing. Using the, the eye cream at night, will also mean that the area around your eye, which sometimes can be really dehydrated, um, will mean that if it is dehydrated and you put concealer on in this area, it can sort of grab into it and look a little bit cakey. If you've got nicely um, hydrated eyes, that makes a difference in your overall look of your foundation and your concealer. So I did that as well. And that's also got the hyaluronic acid, vitamins A, C, E in it. So that's what I did last night. Um, this morning, I've already used the cleanser, but I haven't done anything else to my face. It feels a bit weird to be honest. So I'm going to I'm going to show you now what I will what I do in the morning before putting on my foundation, which we'll do we'll do later. So I'm going to put my clips on. Um, a lot of ladies do do their eye makeup. A lot of makeup artists put their eye makeup on before they put their foundation on um, so that if they get any spillage um, of eye makeup, they can then just clean it all up with their foundation and their concealer. I tend to do my foundation first. But obviously, I haven't today, um, but you know, there's no wrong or right on that. So the first product that I use and the product, this has been absolute game changer for me. Um, it's the Daily 
um, the Daily SPF 50 Plus Serum, which is a fairly new product to look fabulous forever. And I felt that it was a, a product I know Trisha did that was, was sort of missing from our range. Um, particularly at this time of year, I mean, you can see how I'm quite pale. Um, I haven't, sadly, I haven't had any lovely winter sun this year. Um, a lot of rain, which is good for our skin. Rain's good, but um, I haven't had much sun. So if you're going to suddenly go out and you know, the sun is shining and I do, I play tennis, if I haven't had any sun or any kind of, you know, exposure and then I just suddenly go out and I'm not protected, I, I'm quite fair, I do burn. So this is an all year round product and I absolutely love the way that it goes on. Um, and often SPF 50s are quite white and quite thick and a bit mask-like. This product really, really isn't. Um, it's got, again, hyaluronic acid. I keep talking about hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is, as I said, a moisture magnet and it will bind um, a thousand times its weight in water to itself. So anything you put on top of it um, will go in and will it'll just hydrate your skin. It's something that we naturally produce. It's in our skin, it's in our joints. And as we get older, we, we have less of it. So the more hyaluronic acid you can get in your skincare products, the better. So I'm going to just put a little bit of this on. So I take probably about that much and I put this on first. So I put it on to clean skin and I put it also, just put it onto the neck. If I'm wearing a low top, obviously I will put it onto my decolletage as well. And I'll put too much on there and see it just doesn't, you don't need, you don't need loads, but it is just the most lovely consistency. Um, and I have found that my foundation looks better for using this. So I was a bit worried that it might be thick and white and sort of make everything go on, just, just feel draggy on the skin, but it's not, it's really, really, really nice. So I don't know if any of you have used it and are pleased with it, but it's nice to, I think we've had some really good re results from it. So a little bit of this. It's very easy to forget to use an SPF. So I, I literally have it on my sink. So it is for me the first thing I do after I've cleansed and then I don't forget then it, it's done, done for the day. Um, right, so the next thing, and this is something that some ladies use this in the day, some ladies only use this at night. Um, if I want my foundation to look really good and flawless, I do use it in the day. And it's the other serum that we have, the Hydration Hold Serum. Now this is one we've had for a long time um, and it does have, hyaluronic acid it's got I think it's 2.5% so it's quite a high percentage of hyaluronic acid it's a little pipette and again you don't need very much so a couple of drops of this quite runny and just pop that on as well before your moisturizer so I said if you don't want to do this use it at night only I tend to use it morning and night but I would if I want to look really good for the day I will put it on um, it does make a difference. Doesn't have any smell, really, really easy to go on. So that's the hyaluronic acid. And what I then do, the hydration hold serum, what I then do is use a little bit of my morning, so at night I would use my night cream, morning I would use my day moisturizer. So you don't need very much of any of the products. Probably not much more than that. So I'm gonna just pop that on as well. My skin is already feeling so much better than it did when I came onto the call. It was sort of saying, please, please, mum, put some, please put some moisturizer on. A bit weird having your eye makeup on and no, no moisturizer. So sort of upward. Again, a little goes a long way. which is basically what I sometimes do at this stage also um, is to use a little bit of, where is it, my, find it, my, uh, 
I had it here. I've got stuff everywhere. My hydration, my uh, lip balm. So I will find that in a moment. Here it is, my lip balm. So while I'm sort of in the moisturising mode, I would then put some. I've used it last night as well. Uh, but if you put that on now, and then when you get to the lipstick process, just wipe it off. Um, it just gives your lips a chance to be a little bit more hydrated for later. So I'm in the, sort of the hydration mode now. Really important at this stage to wait. So you have layered the skin, but what I then do is something else. So I would go and brush my teeth, do my hair, get dressed, do something. I wouldn't go straight into makeup or the, the face primer at this stage. Um, so I'm going to let this sink in. I'm going to hand back to Tricia, who's going to talk to you a little. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to talk to you about something really important first. Really important. I'm going to talk to you about hydration. Again, this is something that as we get older, um, it's really important to drink water and to drink more. Um, the amount of water in our body actually naturally decreases by about up to 15% between the ages of 20 and, and 80. So staying hydrated is massively important for lots and lots of reasons, um, for our skin, um, for our cognitive brain function, our brain cells need water. Um, and you know, if you haven't drunk enough water, you can easily become a little bit dizzy, you can get a little bit confused. Um, so, if you're not drinking enough, the other thing about water is it will it will flush out bacteria that we have in our bladder and lovely thing to talk about on a Monday morning, but to reduce urinary tract infections. As we get older, we are much more prone to UTIs and drinking water. And I know I know this from personal experience and from looking after somebody as well who has recently had had this for that very reason. Um, she doesn't like to go the toilet when she's out um so she sort of holds it and doesn't drink very much because of that reason and i know it's a, i know it's a problem um sometimes but the more you can get into the habit of drinking the better you are going to be um for your digestion as well for your mobility and joints for regulating temperature in the body as well as we get older, it's quite interesting. The first center in our brain, which is in the hypothalamus, isn't as um, isn't as active. So our brain does not give us um, always the signals that it used to when we were younger that we need to drink. We don't feel as thirsty as we used to. So if we don't drink, our kidneys are affected first. Um, so one way to know whether you are drinking enough is to check your urine color. How dark is it? How light is it? It's really important to check that to make sure it's not too dark. Um, the other thing I'd like you all to do this now is to just pinch the top of your hands and see how, whether when you pinch it, you can do it sort of near your knuckle, whether it goes down quickly or whether it stays up. We'll have a go at that now. Just if it stays up and it's sort of in a tent, looks like a tent, it might be that you are a little bit dehydrated. So that's one really easy way just to check yourself whether you are drinking enough water. Um, water just gets rid of toxins, gets rid of bacteria, helps to reduce dry lips. If you've got dry lips all the time, it, again, it might be a sign that you're not drinking enough. Um, so you can buy. Um, apps on your phone uh, I think there's one that's just called track water tracker or you can fill up a one and a half two litre bottle keep it in your fridge um, so you know how much you're drinking it's easier I always think it's easier in the summer when you're eating more fruit more vegetables more salad obviously you're getting water through some of your your food as well um, but it, it's very easy you know when it's winter time not to drink enough I'm a bit of a convert now to listening to Dr. Michael Mosley on green tea. I don't know if any of you drink green tea. It's meant to be one of the best things. And so for me, when it's cold, I don't always want to drink cold water, but I am now drinking a bit more green tea. And I must say, I didn't like the taste at first, but it's really grown on me now. Um, so that's that could be something else that you do. So drinking enough water, really important. So as this is still sinking in, I'm going to hand back to Tricia, who's just going to talk a little bit about the foundation side, and then I'm going to do a demonstration. So I'll hand back to Tricia. 
Thank you, Sally. Uh, I just want to reiterate, I've got my water here. Um, always have a glass of water. Uh, just I just always have a glass of water around. And I do that thing that Sally just said. I've, I've actually got a bottle, a plastic bottle of, um, that, you know, was uh, full of water. And when it was empty, I, I used, I drink tap water. I do not drink bottled water. Normally, this is when I was out. And um, I fill it up and I can then measure how much water I've had because how often do I have to refill that from the tap? And uh, I, I like to I like to to know that I've refilled at least once a day. So if I filled it once a day, I've had two liters of water. Um, and then of course you get water in tea, you get water in other uh, liquids that you drink. Um, and also, as Sally said, in your food, but it is incredibly important. And I do think it's a tricky subject uh, for older people. I would even say more of a tricky subject for older women because the fear when you go out not being able to find a loo um, and of sort of that urge incontinence which is where you suddenly want to go you know I want to go I want to go now and there's a fear that you're going to um, embarrass yourself somehow I know it's difficult to talk about these things but we have to talk about these things because they're real and they're there are real lived experience um, but definitely okay occasionally if you've got a day out fine you're going to drink perhaps a bit less but all the time I think you should be topping up your water <clears throat> and that test that you know pinch test really really important when I used to do makeovers in the shops that we had in Guildford and uh, Wimbledon I used to know immediately I touched somebody's skin whether they were dehydrated or not, it's an incredible thing. If you if you're a makeup artist, you can feel skin that's hydrated and happy, and skin that's dehydrated and, un and unhappy. And I, you know, if I could feel it, I, I used to say, "Do you drink? Do you drink very much water?" It feels to me like you need to drink more water. You also need to have a better regime of skincare because your skin is literally sitting there going, "I am so thirsty and dry." And it's very difficult to put makeup onto thirsty, dry, dehydrated skin because the skin, um, it just doesn't want the makeup on top of it. It tends to reject the makeup in the sense that the makeup often disappears quite quickly. It's sucked into the skin and it doesn't look very good. It can look patchy. Um, and, you know, that's one of the reasons why Sally has gone through what she's gone uh, through this morning in terms of really making sure that your skin is in the best condition possible. So, uh, on to the next process of flawlessness. So it starts with the canvas, which is preparing the skin. And the next thing then is what do you then paint onto the canvas? There's two things about flawlessness when it comes to, um, to that. It's the choice of um, the makeup and the ingredients that's in that makeup. And then it's how you apply it. So uh, clearly, Look Fabulous Forever, I started it all those years ago, 10 years ago, because I wanted to produce products that I knew had the best ingredients in them to make older skin look tip top. And uh, that, that's what I wanted. And that's what, what I worked very hard to do with um, Alan and Paul, the two guys that I met, <coughs> excuse me, at Creative Cosmetics, the business we now own, um, and which now is our factory, which uh, still is producing all our products, thankfully. And obviously everything and anything to create smoothness, to create that effect of a beautifully fresh, newly made bed. So smoothness, redu reduction of wrinkles and lines, um, and, and also the, the skin looking good and, and plump. So obviously we start with things like uh, the primer. The primer makes a huge difference. Uh, I think Sally's going to demonstrate this in a minute or two, the way that what she does, or she's... Uh, Sally, can I clarify with you? Are you putting your, your makeup on at the moment? No, I'm going to show you. I'm going to do that okay. on screen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. So uh, obviously primer's big, big contribution to flawlessness because what a primer does is it smooths the skin and it keeps that makeup in place for longer. So uh, an incredibly essential part of what you do. The, one of the reasons that we're separating this into two distinct areas, so we're doing skincare, and now we're going to do, and soon we're going to do the base, you know, the, the foundation primer and stuff. And I want you to think of them as two very different things because people get very confused. They say, oh, okay, so now I'm doing that, uh, you know, what Sally's just done. So I don't need the primer. Now, hang on a minute. Primer isn't skincare. Primer is makeup. 
primer is designed not to be a moisturizer, not to add um, hydration to your skin, but to go onto your skin, which you've already moisturized, and create this wonderful smoothing effect. And it's, it's pretty magic stuff, our primer. It's phenomenal. It's the highest uh, selling, the, the, the fastest and highest selling product of any in our range and has been from day one because it's so good. So primer, it's Sally will demonstrate it. And then we come to the actual foundation that you're going to use. Now, again, holy grail for me. I was so dissatisfied with the primer uh, the foundations I was buying. And I spent money on them because I wanted them to look good. And they didn't. They didn't look good. And I, I ended up thinking, you know why they don't look good? Because they were produced for a skin that's very different from mine. And because they, they were produced and formulated for a skin that's very different from mine, they didn't work on my skin. They were too thin. They didn't last. They didn't they didn't add anything to 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 the way that my face looked in some in some instances they detracted from it. So um, I'm very proud of our foundation. Um, I use it every day. I've used it every day since, uh, you know, since I started the business and I absolutely love it. It has great coverage. It, I think, makes my skin look smoother. It stays. It lasts. Yes, it's helped by the primer. But un it's undoubtedly, in my view, the best foundation ever. And I absolutely love it. Um, I do. Uh, I was lucky enough. Sally mentioned about being in the sun for uh, a little while. I, I had a wonderful holiday in Thailand in um, January. And uh, I used the, uh, the beauty, light look beauty balm while I was there. It was 32 degrees. It, it wasn't terribly humid, but it was humid enough. And uh, I found that that was enough. That also gives a lovely degree of coverage, but without being quite the same as the foundation, which I think is brilliant. I use that all year round, in fact, in the, in the UK. Um, so the foundation and then its application, you, you know, you've got to get the foundation onto your skin in the way that complements uh, the, the, the foundation that you're using and then the, uh, the application that you're uh, that, that, that you're then going to do. So we've got a couple of foundation brushes now. We've um, actually that's not the other one. I've got the other one. We've got an angled one, which I love, but we've got a new one, which is a stubby one. Very much requested. And it's stubby with shorter um, with shorter bristles. And what, what I love about this is that I put the foundation the back of my hand, rub it in. Sally will, will no doubt demonstrate this. And you can kind of stipple it on. And actually in that process, what you're doing is you're really, really pushing that foundation into your skin. Foundation isn't applied on top of your skin. It's, it's, it's applied into your skin. And that's really, really important because if you apply it properly and you combine it into your skin, I then use the warmth of my fingers to just smooth it and then do all that, you know, do the edges so that you haven't got any of those nasty lines around here. Um, I make sure that, you know, I'm spreading it, smoothing it. Of course, it should match your skin color at the edge. You know, you always put it there and then you take it down and basically it should pretty much disappear. Having done that, having done the buff, buffing in and everything, I always take a big fat number one brush and then I do what I think of as polishing. And I this has got nothing on it. This, this has got nothing on it at all. And I just do this and I literally just polish 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 especially at the edges making sure that all, all my all the edges just it just disappears and that process of application really really makes a difference to how good my foundation looks um, and i think it makes all the difference so having done that i'm then going to go on to use those other products that are fabulous when it comes to flawlessness and i'm talking about concealer what would we do without concealer? I have a terrible problem at the moment, and it's getting worse because I'm getting older. Um, you know, I'm <laughs> going to hardly bear to say this, but I'm four years now away from being 80 years old, and um, that that sort of feels really quite shocking to me. I don't know why I should. Why should it feel shocking? Um, it's the way it is. But the thing is that obviously the changes that are going on on my face are happening, you know, as we speak. And one of them is this terrible darkening that I'm getting around my eyes. 
the inner corner. And of course, the solution to that is concealer. And the other wonderful product that I think that we have for flawlessness is translucent face, face powder. If you want a face that just looks smoother and more finished and just perfect it, you know, the smoothing down, the last smoothing down of the duvet cover as you stand back from your beautifully newly made bed is translucent powder. And uh, these things all contribute to making a difference. Uh, you don't have to use them all, but each one of them, the ones that I've mentioned, so the primer, the foundation, the concealer, the translucent powder, and the way you apply, apply those with the um, very, you know, the good brushes that we've got, they all just add that little bit of refinement and refinement, flawlessness is pretty much the same thing. Um, some of you are sitting there gradually losing the will to live. You're sitting there going, OMG, you know, is she going to mention yet another product, another layer, another thing that I've got to remember, another bit of time that's going to come out of my very busy day. Um, I'm going to make no excuses for that whatsoever. I never have done. And I don't because I do this once a day. I don't do it again. I don't have to refresh my makeup. I don't have to touch my makeup. I don't have to think about my makeup for the rest of the day until I go to bed because it's done and it's flawless and it will stay that way. So that's one thing. And the second thing is, why are you not worth that time? Why are you not worth that little bit of trouble as a human being to make yourself look and feel fabulous. I think you're worth every second of it. And I think it's a gift that you need to give yourself every day. You give yourself the gift of time and trouble to say to yourself, I am you know, worthy of this effort because I know that once I've done it, I shall feel terrific for the rest of the day. And you know, that's a pretty big gift to give yourself every day. So I'm not making excuses. I'm just saying, take the time and trouble and you get the results. So I'm going to hand back to Sally, who's now going to do that in action. Thank you, Tricia. Thank you. Yeah, I totally agree. Time for me, I, I, I enjoy, I, I put the radio on while I'm doing my makeup and listen to the radio or listen to some music and it's sort of me time. So I am going to do just what Trisha says. I'm going to first of all put on, this was the product that introduced me personally to look fabulous forever. The Smooth Like Silk Face Prime. It's my hero product. Um, I'd never found a primer as a makeup artist that I loved. I always thought it was a little bit gimmicky, to be honest. But this one genuinely made all the difference. So you don't need much. Again, a couple of pumps is all you take. That much onto your hand. I put this on onto my skin with my fingers um, and it does actually, as you put it on, you can see any fine lines and open pores just blurring. So it's like magic and your skin feels superbly smooth. So it's like a decorator would prime a wall before putting on the paint. So I just put this all over I've already, we've got different primers for lips and eyes. I've already used the eye prime before putting my eye makeup on this morning. But um, I wish I could bathe in this. I, I really love this product and it does make a massive difference to the um, foundation. So I sometimes use the Light Look Beauty Balm mixed with the foundation. Today I'm going to just use Continuous Cover Foundation in shade two. And what I like to do for me, and I know some ladies like to do this, is to also, having put the primer on, what I do is I put the foundation onto the back of my hand, but I then add a tiny bit more primer to it. It's just something I find it goes on really well. You don't have to, but I quite like to just mix a little bit of primer with it. Um, we've got, as Tricia said, we've got two foundation brushes. Um, we've got one, this one, which is slightly more um, angled and slightly less firm. This is our brush number three. And then we've got the newest one, which is our brush number 10, which as Trisha said, is, is it's got smaller, slightly shorter and more dense bristles. It's still very soft, but it's definitely um, a little bit more compact, which I personally love this one for a really flawless look. So I just basically just onto my hand so I'm not taking it all up just some of it onto my brush 
And then what I do is I start, I tend to start in the middle, like Trisha says, more, more stippling than dragging at it to start with. Um, if you have used um, the green color corrector or the peach color corrector, you would do that before the foundation. You do your primer, then your green or your peach. And if you have used that, obviously you really do want to stipple over the areas. Maybe you've used the green to get rid of some redness. You don't want to just drag your foundation on because that will just drag it off, drag off the green. So what I'm doing is stippling it in, starting in the middle and then working my way to the outside of my face. Um, and this brush makes it so easy. And you can use just fingers, but I just think brushes make all the difference, as Trisha said, because you can properly, I don't tend to use the big brush. I might try Trisha's trick of using the very big powder brush afterwards. I just love to buff in with this one, really, really buff it in, like Trisha says. I'm still using bits. I'm taking more up as I need it, rather than putting lots and lots on the brush straight away. Do it in a sort of in stages so you can then build up to the areas that you really need some you, the nice thing about the brushes you can get into the nose area around here um, i'm putting a little bit around my eye area um, but i am going to then go on with concealer so don't forget if you wear your hair short or if you wear your hair up to make sure you do get your foundation right into the area near your ears so you don't have a gap here um, and if you've chosen the right color for you you shouldn't need to wear foundation down your neck you should literally at the jawline just blend it at the jawline and it should be the right color so for me number two is brilliant at this time of year if I do get a little bit of color which I probably won't if I'm wearing my SPF 50 plus but if I do I will go on to the the 2.5 in the height of the summer so just keep buffing until you've got it really even. So what you're doing is you're creating a canvas on which to paint the picture. That's how I see foundation. It's a canvas. It shouldn't look like a mask. And that's what's so beautiful about this one. It's got coconut oil in it. It's got vitamin E. So it still leaves the skin looking real and not looking cakey and not looking mask-like, like some foundations do. Um, and what I then do, just like Trisha, I do take my finger and just the warmth of my hand, just finish off by just making sure everything is really well, well blended and there's no little marks anywhere. Um, so what I'm going to do now is to to use the concealer. Um, and this is for me, it's sort of part and parcel of using the foundation. Our concealer, it's a I'm going to use the shade two cover to cover concealer. It's really creamy. It's got tea tree oil in it. And I'm going to take my concealer brush number four. And you can see I've got some darkness around my eyes. I'm going to put some just in the inner corner of my eyes. Instantly makes me look more awake. Um, and just tap that. Because it's creamy, it is so easy to apply. So I'm just going to tap a little bit with my brush you can use fingers clean fingers if you want to put it on but i quite like the brush more and it will just suddenly i look oh gosh sally suddenly had some sleep so and then i take my ring finger because this is the one that you can do the least damage around your eyes and i tap 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 so that the warmth of my finger will just melt the concealer into the foundation. And you don't need lots. I think that's the secret. Don't, don't put too much concealer on, particularly if you've got lots of, you know, I don't tend to put, I've got lots of lines here. I don't tend to put concealer here because then it will sit. I put it more in this, this sort of area here. Um, I do sometimes, I've got broken capillaries around my nose and I always put a little bit of concealer, just, just that help, just that little area here and then just tap it in. And I've also got some, um, some sunspots and pigmentation that you'll know where your little areas are. So you can just help, it's just a little bit of extra help. A little bit there, same areas every day, they don't go. So 
you kind of get to know exactly where to put it um, on your own face if you want to, just to create that lovely flawless look. Um, and for me, that's when everything starts to sort of, I think, oh yes, I'm looking nice and nice and even now. Um, as Trisha said, the third product that makes for a flawless look is powder. Powder can make or break a makeup. Um, I went a few years ago into a large department store um, and had my makeup done just to see what the young girls were doing and what, what the latest, I might have told you the story, or the latest um, sort of tricks. So I didn't say that I did makeup. I just wanted to see what they would put on me. Beautiful makeup, absolutely lovely. And then at the end, the young, very young girl, she was very young, she looked about 12, got out a powder and dusted it all over my face to set it. And suddenly I every line that I've got, and I've got quite a lot, every line around my eye was suddenly there. And from being a really lovely makeup look, it looked really cakey. Um, so, and I know a lot of women are worried about powder because of that reason, but um, the Look Fabulous powder is so fine that that doesn't happen and that makes such a difference. So again, you can just use the big powder brush, number one, to just sweep over um, and it doesn't look like you're wearing powder, but there is a very, very, very fine layer, which will just make you look even more airbrushed, if you like, than, than and it will keep your foundation on. As Trisha said, all day, I never, ever touch off my foundation. The other thing you can do is you can, with a smaller brush, so this is our brush number seven, you can take your powder and you can just press it into areas where you've used a little bit of concealer maybe in more defined areas so if I've if I've covered somebody's spot or if I've covered a um an age pigmentation area I might put a little bit of extra help just on these areas and that will just keep that concealer in place if, if it looks too obvious just dust a bit off and what will be needed will be grabbed on so it's a fantastic product if you're going to use bronzer um, I also at this stage put a little bit of powder just on my neck if I'm going to bronze my neck area just so that the bronzer doesn't get grabbed to my moisturizer and go patchy. So um, hopefully you can see I, I now need some color on my on my cheeks and my lips to finish the look but I look hopefully a little bit more flawless and a little bit more um, even than I did when I first came on the screen. So I'm going to come back to Trisha while off screen, you don't want to say, I'm going to put my blusher and lips on, then she can show, show you the complete look when I finished. So I hope that was, was helpful. And I'll hand back to Tricia. Thank you, Sally. That was wonderful. And a very good illustration of, you know, how, how you can go from, um, uh, how Sally looked to, to the, the flawlessness. I've been leaning on my chin, it's gone red. Um, I was going to mention before and, uh, and didn't, uh, I won't say I forgot, uh, the pilling and I'll, I'll talk about that very briefly now so pilling is where your um your foundation you start to put it on and it sort of forms little balls um almost and they sort of flake off and it's horrible it's horrible when it happens and there are three main reasons for it so i just want to go through it so that you can avoid it the first is that there's an incompatibility between your skincare and your makeup and that incompatibility is because of the ingredients that there is in your skincare. And then when you come to put your makeup on, um, it doesn't like it. So the makeup sort of starts to slide off and it slides off, as I said, in these little, little pill, pilling balls. Now, obviously, if you use a different brand of skincare and you find that our foundation then doesn't work for you, it's because the skincare and our foundation are incompatible with each other. Obviously, our skincare is compatible with our foundation. It was when I was testing the skincare. So um, I worked, we, we worked for about two years with a, with a formulator, with a chemist, in order to get it right and to have it, you know, the way I wanted it to be. The first thing I did when I tried whatever he sent me, whether that was serum or... Um, moisturizer was to immediately see if it worked with our foundation it absolutely had to work with our foundation so it does um so that's one thing so it'll be the incompatibility between the two the ingredients in the in the skincare and the um, our makeup the second is the amount that you're putting on the amount of skincare that you're putting on 
your skin can only absorb so much of a product. It just, you know, it, it, and it isn't a question as more is more. So you do, don't think my skin will be less high, uh, better hydrated if I put more moisturizer on. Your skin will be better hydrated if you put the right kind of moisturizer on with the right ingredients in the right way. And you don't need much. You never need as much as you think. Just putting on a really nice light um, application is will do the work that it needs to do for your skin, but it then won't be this terrible barrier to the, you then being able to apply your foundation and the other makeup that you want to put on. So that makeup will slide off and form these little you know, the, the pilling that I'm talking about, if you put too much on. Um, so, that, you know, so that's a, that's a really important thing to, um, uh, to think about. So too much product. And the other, and the, the third thing is not waiting long enough between the application of your skincare and your makeup. Sally and I have demonstrated that, that, that this morning. She put her skincare on and then handed over to me and said that in normal life, she will go off and do other things. And there's a very good reason for that. Let your skin settle after the skincare that you've applied. Let it absorb that skincare in the best possible way. And then start the process of putting your makeup on. You won't have a problem. Uh, the, the only other thing to be aware of is that if your skin is very dehydrated and you um, haven't, uh, so it's got lots of skin, dead skin cells on it and you haven't exfoliated again I get this sometimes I know I need to exfoliate when I get the edges down here my up I put my make my foundation on it's fine on my face which is is fully you know happy and moisturized then I get down here and suddenly it's pilling down here and that's because this bit isn't as moisturized as it needs to be, but also it needs exfoliating and I need to get rid of that de those dead skin cells. So just remember all of that. Your, your foundation will, will not pill if you're doing it, um, if, you're, if you're using the right skincare, applying it in the right way, leaving long enough, and also your skin is well exfoliated. Um, and the last thing I just want to talk about very, uh, very briefly, just back to the SPF 50. We've got an offer on this week, which is a, an amazing offer. We, are, we do it every now and again um, at, to either for you to replenish your stocks or for you to actually say, right, I think it, time has come for me to actually try some of the Look Fabulous Forever skincare is it's 25 percent off all our skincare range with the code. Uh, the code is CARE capital letter c-a-r-e 25 so very simple care 25 and um just about the spf 50 which sally mentioned this is our newest product i really would say that i can't understand why anybody wouldn't have this in their in their um cupboard to put on every morning i used it when i was in thailand um and i came back with a face that was completely free from any form of tan um, and you might say that's a disadvantage, but for me, it was a huge advantage, which really meant that the SPF 50 worked extremely well to ensure that there was absolutely no sun damage on my face as a result of being in a hot climate for two weeks, in a very hot climate for two weeks. Um, it is phenomenal stuff. When we we flirted with the idea of using, of, of, of getting um, something called SPF drops, and I got quite excited about this and I thought, oh, yeah, I like the idea of that. SPF drops perhaps to add to your foundation uh, or possibly to your moisturizer. And uh, this would be an additional uh, thing that would just give the SPF 50 um, protection to another of the creams that you're applying. Um, I tried some. I thought they were lovely. And then for one reason or another, the... Um, they decided not to produce them. Uh, they obviously ran into some kind of manufacturing problems with it. So then we went to back to square one, if you like, with it. And uh, SPF 50 protective um, cream serum, call it what you will. Um, and then I started trialing some of them. And the whiteness in them is titanium oxide. And titanium oxide is an ingredient which is put into SPF in order to uh, create literally a, a physical barrier between you and the sun. Uh, but the, it turns the skin very white and it's horrible stuff to have to work with in terms of the rest of um, you know, your makeup application. It really is horrible stuff. It's quite sticky, it's quite solid, it's quite rigid as a, as a thing, it's not a nice cream. Then we got to where we are with the RSPF 50 and I love this stuff so much I can hardly tell you how much I love it. What I love about it is that 
not only is it there to protect my skin, it actually makes my makeup look better. And when I started trialing it, and I trialed it for about six months before we were able to um, get it on the shelves, and every day I'd put this SPF 50 on, and then I'd put, you know, as Sally did, the usual stuff, then put my foundation on. And it was like, oh, my God, my foundation looks lovely. It looks more luminous. It just looks fresher. And it's the SPF 50. So it's a product that I think packs so much of a punch. So you could try it this week because you're going to get 25% off. So uh, it also lasts really well. You don't need an awful lot of it. And it, you can see that the formulation of it is it's like a light single cream. It's slightly runny, but it's really, really easy to apply. And uh, I, I know I go on about it a bit, but I can't tell you. I cannot tell you how much I love it. And I think it's uh, it's just one of the best products we've ever produced. And I think all our products are pretty good. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you very, very much indeed for coming. All of you, delightful to have your company on this quite nice spring morning. Um, we've been doing the subject of flawlessness. Hopefully you'll go away now and your face will always look like a freshly made bed. <laughs> And if you weren't here to hear my introduction, you'll wonder what earth I'm talking about. But uh, those of you who were here from the beginning will know what I mean by that. So good luck with that. And uh, yeah, lovely to see all of you. Have a wonderful week. Bye bye.